Today, we're up bright and early in the morning. We're headed to Kansas City to rail fan CPKC on its first day of operation. However, things almost immediately didn't go to plan. About 30 minutes after I arrived at the rail fanning spot, which was just outside of CP and KCS's shared yard, I was informed by a security guard that rail traffic had been canceled until noon, in lieu of CPKC's merger ceremony. The problem was, I had to leave by noon, so rail fanning wasn't an option. Instead of walking away empty-handed, I decided the next best option was to film CPKC's merger ceremony. There's three events happening today. The first is several people will get up and speak about CPKC. Then, a silver spike will be driven into the ground where CP and KCS meet, officially connecting the two railroads. And then, ground will be broken on CPKC's U.S. headquarters. Inside, the place was packed. Railroad executives and government officials of every kind were in attendance. And there was even a mini bar, along with a super fancy buffet, that even had a little CPKC locomotive cake. Outside was the ceremony itself, which was equally impressive. In addition to the two massive road locomotives being used as a background, KCS also brought their streamlined business train to the event. I hope these classic EMDs will continue to serve under CPKC, but if not, all we can do is hope that they'll be preserved. Shortly after getting set up, the ceremony began with a safety briefing. See, I want to thank all of our elected officials, all of our friends, our guests for being here. This is a tremendous day to share with so many friends. As we do in the railroad industry, we're going to begin our morning with a safety briefing, and I would like to call forward our Vice President of Operations, Eastern U.S. Region, Tim Livingston, for a safety briefing. Tim? Thank you, Warren. Uh, with, with every meeting, uh, every job, every start uh, on the railroads, it starts with safety briefing, and that is the foundation of the CPKC culture. So I'll go through what we typically go through as part of a, a safety briefing in any meeting that we have across, uh, across the railroad. We are at 4747 Front Street, a very historical site, very historical address for you to remember in the event that you have to call 911. The hospital that is closest to this location is North Kansas City Hospital. It's about three miles away, very close, and it's about a, a seven minute drive. Weather looks great today. 80 degrees is the, is the plan, uh, eight mile an hour winds, so we should not have to, uh, to, to take cover, but in the event that we have to take cover for some reason, the first location will be this tent. If we need more cover, we will uh, exit here, take a left across the rail tracks and go into uh, the yard office here just, just past us. One last thing I'd like to address, rail conditions, tie conditions, ballast, slip trip and fall prevention is a uh, big topic in the rail industry, so I'll cover that off here. So we, we do have some wires. They've done a great job covering those up. On the railroad we say do not put your feet where your eyes have not been, so please look where you're walking. Uh, there are no handrails on this uh, podium here, so uh, please be careful. We can assist if needed for those speakers. And then as we go to the Golden Spike, um, where Mr. Krill will be uh, uh, over here with a group of individuals. If you do have high heels and you're not comfortable walking up this ballast edge here, we have three steps to this side of the stage here. For those of you that will be more comfortable walking up, stepping into the, the gauge of the track here and walking across the ties to get to that spot. Thank you very much. And after that, various government officials, railroad executives, and the CEO himself, Mr. Keith Creel, spoke about CPKC and the historic significance of this event for about an hour. Here are some highlights from the speeches. We came together with KCS probably about a year ago. We need to prove the concept. We talked about this transcontinental railroad. What can we do to create a product that will truly move the needle? So on an airline basis, we launched a train from Chicago, going to Laredo, and into Mexico. We ran that train effectively at unparalleled transit times. Uh, that a truck can't compete with, and even a railroad with a 200 mile shorter route to Laredo can't compete with out of Chicago. That's the power of the single line extended length network. 
we actually ran that train from Chicago to the border in less than 70 hours. The next best standard with the Union Pacific is, is over 90 hours. That's a material difference in transit time. You integrate into the simplicity and the velocity you create transitioning through that border over the bridge, which is soon becoming two bridges, you create an unparalleled service product that effectively will get us from Chicago to Interporto at the terminal just south of St. Louis Potosi, which is deep in the heart of Mexico, literally in under 100 hours. A truck cannot do that. Oh, this railway will be able to do that. That's going to unlock the potential just as a start. You're not going to wait on a throttle railroad. I believe in working hard and I believe in moving fast. Uh, so the work that we've done, we've announced, and we're going to let our customers know effective, I think, in the middle of May. So we're probably asking for three or four weeks to get all of our operating systems and metrics and all that aligned. Uh, we're going to launch train 181 and train 180. That's the train pair. It's going to offer that service less than 100 hours from Chicago to Interporto and from Interporto back to Chicago. And I guarantee you we've got some exciting announcements. There are a tremendous amount of interest from customers uh, that we can't yet talk about, we'll soon be talking about, that will be the base load of business for that train. And as we build it, it will grow. The other powerful piece of this is this combination is about sustainability. Think of the tens of thousands of trucks that we'll be able to take off, off the highway and put them on the railway. Think about the tons of greenhouse gas emissions that will be saved and the benefit to the environment. Millions of tons over the future years to come enabled by this transaction. Yeah, but I would like to take this moment uh, to recognize and acknowledge all of the generations of Kansas City Southern leaders, railroaders, employees, many of you in the audience today who have contributed to having our company be at this moment, at this celebration. We've got a couple of our former leaders here with us today that I'd like to acknowledge. Mr. Mike Haverty, former president and uh, CEO, who, uh, whose fingerprints are all over our presence in Mexico. Mike, if it hadn't been for your tenacity and stubborn Irish will, uh, I don't know that we would be here at this moment. Another one of our great leaders, uh, Mr. Irv Hockaday. Irv, uh, I don't know, Irv, Irv's back there, former president and uh, CEO of Kansas City Southern and, and great friend. And uh, we thank you for all that you did in your time to contribute to the success of our company and make it possible for us to be here today. I want to also recognize uh, one who's not here with us. And uh, I'm probably going to get a little emotional with this, Mr. Dave Starling great friend um, who passed away uh, very unexpectedly just a few weeks ago and, and Dave uh, played such a role in getting us to this place and, and Dave was genuinely excited to be part of this combination through his role as trustee of, of the voting trust he's greatly missed he was a he was a great friend and a, and a great man uh, and I want to acknowledge him uh, and it has really been a tremendous honor for me uh, to be in this position and to be here on this day, this historic day, when we are putting together the first truly transnational built and transcontinental railroad. Something that railroaders have been trying to do for more than 150 years and we're doing it today. And that is just so cool. I can't tell you what an honor it has been for me to be a part of this and I think I speak for a lot of people in the Kansas City and Kansas City Southern community for our company to be a part of this in a meaningful way going forward to create this history that we're about to create is 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 just such a blessing it's it's beyond words yeah. so the importance of this merger uh, and, and I learned this from being governor now for several years but because infrastructure and workforce development is such a key to this administration but I have been to Israel, Dubai, Greece, Germany, Sweden, the Netherlands, the UK, Australia, you name it, where I'm trying to recruit people to Missouri. But let me tell you one of the largest selling points that I have today is what's sitting right behind me today. When I get to talking about this merger on the world market, when people are wanting to come to our state and to invest, and when you can say you'll have the only continuous rail in North America, and 
be a partner with Canada and Mexico, nowhere else can anybody say that in the United States. And the headquarters are going to be in Kansas City, Missouri. And if you would like to hear all of the speeches in their entirety, I'll be releasing a video of the whole merger ceremony beginning to end on Tuesday the 25th. After the speeches were made, it was time to drive the final spike, formally merging Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern. Getting set up for the shot was rather hectic. There was a whole lot of people and not a lot of space, but everything ended up working out just fine. And with that, Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern became one. Despite all the bad rap this merger's been getting, Mr. Creel is right. CPKC will make shipping goods up and down the continent a lot quicker. Now, the way CPKC will affect competition between railroads, and the way it'll affect customers of what used to be CP and KCS, whether it's for better or for worse, will be a whole different story. Aside from the business viewpoint, Think about the history we've just lived. A new transcontinental railroad hadn't been made in over a century, and another transcon might not ever be made again. This is also the first time the entire North American continent's been connected under one railroad. No matter what stance you take on CPKC, there's a couple things that are certain. This merger is a significant and historic event. Once the spike ceremony was through, it was time to break ground on CPKC's new U.S. headquarters. But first, a few words from CEO Keith Creel. What do we need to help them with? Like, are they just grabbing them? I would hand them to them. Okay, a morning of uh, celebration. But I'll tell you, as I said, I like to get to work. So today, we said that we're here to stay. This is not less prominence in Kansas City. It's more, and it starts today with this commitment. This commitment to the city, this commitment to this world-class, best North American network, North American railroad, U.S. operations headquarters right here in Kansas City on the ground that we stand on. And that was that. What a way to say goodbye to two amazing and iconic railroads. All we can do now is wish CP Casey good luck. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Also, maybe pass yourself by the merch shop. Anyways, till next time.